we did a study with NCAA athletes, right? Because, you know, college athletes, they have to be at the top of their game. It's not okay to be second best. Their scholarships are riding on it. A lot of them want to go into pro into the pros. So we taught them how to be self-compassionate toward their mistakes that they made in games or maybe setbacks of their training routine to kind of see it as a learning experience to be, instead of a friend, we said, imagine that you're a really supportive, good coach who wanted to give you the most constructive feedback possible. So we taught them to use this supportive inner coach, you know, in their routines. And not only did it help their mental health, but their game improved. Their performance actually improved. So it doesn't undermine your motivation. Yeah. It actually enhances it and it's more effective than self-criticism. Oh, that's amazing. That's really fascinating and really encouraging to hear because I think yeah. a lot of us are taught, you know, growing up, a lot of us are raised like, oh, you have, there, there is some suffering to success or there is some, you have to have the pressure on yourself and push yourself. Why don't you talk about the, for example, something like that, the common ways that people are brought up with their mindsets and how self-compassion should be, you know, the, the better way. This idea that you need to put pressure on yourself, well, there are, that, may, that it might actually be true in some circumstances, right? So again, like if you want to be a top level athlete, you may need to really, you know, push yourself and get up early and, you know, do a lot of training. It's really more the emotional tenor of why you're doing it. Are you doing it because if you, if you don't, you're a failure or that you aren't good enough? And, you know, are you, are you kind of threatening yourself with harshness and with coldness? Or maybe sometimes you, you are putting pressure on yourself, but it's because you care about yourself, because you want to succeed. Okay. You know, you're doing it out of, because like, you want the best for yourself and that you might be willing to say, okay, well, at some point, the pressure is not being helpful. It's causing me stress. It's harming me. Well, then I'm going to let it go. It's really getting clear about your intention. Is your intention to help yourself? And if your intention is to help yourself, then it actually is a form of self-compassion. But, you know, there's, there's, there's a reason why we, we don't tend to know this necessarily intuitively. And that's actually evolutionarily. Uh, it's kind of built into our brains. So we shouldn't judge ourselves for judging <laughs> ourselves. It's, it's also natural. Yep. And that's because when we feel threatened in any way, we immediately go into fight, flight, or freeze, mm -hmm. right? It's our instinctual response. And so we fight ourselves, we criticize ourselves, we judge ourselves thinking either it's going to get us in line so we'll, you know, not be in danger, or maybe it'll blunt the pain of others' criticism if I judge myself first. We yep. isolate ourselves into feeling of, you know, shame, like we flee into feelings of shame to kind of hang our head, think we're protected for the group who may be angry at us, or we freeze and we get stuck and ruminate. Now, when your best friend has a failure, you aren't so personally threatened. So you're actually able to use another system, which is also natural, but doesn't come on come online right away. And that's the care system. You know, the tend and befriend response was, is actually designed for in-group members and family members that we were there for our people we care about, we're warm, we're supportive. We help them feel safe through our caring presence. But it was really it really evolved more for other people, whereas threat defense evolved more to protect ourselves. Mm, okay, so we have to do a little. That's hack. why it's easier to be empathetic to others, but not to ourselves. It's evolutionary. It's evolutionary, you know. And then that, that our that our culture kind of you might say reinforces that natural tendency of the brain. So you have to do a little work. It's not hard. It comes naturally for others. We just have to do a little perspective taking, and we treat ourselves like we would a good friend. You know, we have to remind ourselves because our culture is not going to remind ourselves to do it. But once we give ourselves permission, it's not rocket science. We already know how to be supportive, at least most of us, or at least to our pets or someone right. we care about. We know how to do it. We just have to give ourselves permission to treat ourselves that same way. Yeah. And I, I just want to reiterate what you said earlier about the, the reason... The, the why matters. Like, are you pushing yes. yourself because you're afraid that people will judge you or you think you don't want to be a failure? Like there's a negative way. And then the positive way is you push yourself because you care. And, That's right. and you can't, like, it's out of love and it's okay. So you're saying it's proven that that, that is more effective. Well, yeah. So like with athletes, there's, there's a lot of research. We had another study. If you want more yeah. data, we did another study with undergraduates. Um, and we had, it was, wasn't my study, it was another researcher. They had um, these graduate students at UC Berkeley, by the way, um, take a really hard uh, test that they all failed. 
And then one group of them, they gave them self-compassion instructions. Like, oh, it was a hard test. You know, it's only human to fail. Don't, don't worry about it too much. And the other group, they didn't tell anything, which meant they were, prob- they were Berkeley students. You're probably saying, oh, I can't believe I, I failed that. I'm so stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then they said, okay, well, we're going to take um, a test again. Here's some study materials. Uh, let us know when you're ready to take the test again. And the people who were instructed to be self-compassionate studied longer and harder and did better. Because again, when you aren't so threatened, when you don't have this like fear of failure learning, looming over you, you're actually more able to focus. You know, you, you aren't distracted by your performance anxiety. You're able to learn again from your failures without taking it so personally. Or think of athletes who like choke because they get in their heads and, oh, what does this mean about me? Then that distracts them from their game. Wow. So, it, you know, again, if you, if you unpack it, it makes sense, but it's not really intuitive for most people. So that's where data really helps. 